Nox Box. Everything you need to get your game from the box to the board. Hey guys, welcome to Nox Box. I am Nox himself, and with me tonight is Cordial Rob. Good evening. Tonight we are recovered from our amazing weekend out at Mantic HQ. Good fun. And we come back bearing gifts. Dreadful Extreme. <sighs> straight from the Kickstarter, straight into our hands. We'll be doing a couple of Mantic videos because as well as this, they've kindly given us a Kings of War starter oh, box. I'm so the store excited about that. Because the Kickstarter has finished not yeah, long ago. Yeah, finished today, over 300,000. I yeah. think it was almost 370,000 by the end. Let me check that out. Yeah. But, you know, so you'll be seeing a few more Mantic products from us lately. So, Dreadball Extreme. Let's crack it open. Okay, so the new Dreadball Extreme. Now, Nock has been having a few goes of this with our local games club to get used to it, so as usual, we'll start with the packaging. Some of the new artwork for it, so Brutus Sci-Fi Sports Game, designed by Jake Thornton. Thank you very much, him and his team. It's a really kind of gritty looking box. Oh, those yeah. are, yeah, those are some of the MVPs or the freebooters you can get. Aren't they a special edition? I believe they are, they're the Kickstarter ones. Okay. Just on the side, what Mantic always do, for the two players, this time they've got Dread Bulls for heads. The uh, the picture there is always themed. So you had a plague character for the dead zone. Yeah. You had a Martian for Mars attacks. And in one of the later videos, you'll see the ones for Kings of War and stuff like that Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so here's one of the teams. This is, I believe, the convicts. Yes, they are. And you've got the... Uh, governor? The governor, yes, yeah, something like that. The Gordon, the... Yeah. The governor, we'll go with that. The, the man in charge, the more. Holding the big red button, I believe. Yes, they we'll could get to yeah, that later. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got some more of the special characters, I believe. Yeah, a whole range of them. Oh, including a nameless one. I do love the nameless. That's my team for Dreadball. Is that the Dreadball there? That is. That is a Dreadball. That is fired out at high speed straight into players' faces quite often. And has a random movement now. It does, but yes. But we'll get to that also in a minute. And here is the other team. So these are the Kaveki. Something? That's Bane, I believe. Oh, that the... is. That's Blaine. Oh, Blaine. Blaine. My apology. Can't be, can't be Bane. He looks Bane's, like Bane. Bane's copyrighted. Is he? Yes. I thought so it was an American name. Blaine. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, cracking open the box. Right. New style. So, advertising, advertising. and mantic points. Oh, three free points in that one. It's pretty good. Yeah. Now, this is the bit that you really, really liked. If stand back. Yeah, I'm going to roll right back so you can see that. Da -da -da. Look at the size of that. So this is their special edition deluxe, you know, uh, rubber, mats. rubber mats. And this is a square shaped pitch rather than a round one. So you can see the it's got everything you need to play on there. So each side has the coach's area, or sorry, the sponsor's area, where at the start of each turn, he can either nobble another player to make them play badly. So that reduces their stats, I believe. It does, and they get minus one dice. Then there's the centre section, which I believe gives an additional dice for one of your rolls. Yeah, a coaching dice, but you have to use it that turn. Yeah. And this one is for in league play, you can actually gamble. So you can gamble on whether you're going to kill more players, win the game. So it adds a really interactive part of the game. Yes, and you've got all your different card sections, where they go, yep. your turns, and, and your, your score. score tracker. Very, and very nice. Yeah. Now, the one thing we noticed on this when we were showing the demo at the Mantic Day was these sections here, because originally when you saw it, we had that explained, but that's every time you roll for random movement of the ball, that's the directions, where previously yeah. it was going for so, the player facing. So you've got one move straight forward, two, three... Four, five, six. So there's yeah. six different points the balls can launch at, and they also show you which direction the ball can then travel when it's launched. Yeah. Yeah. So that's very nice. And you, it's the square now, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because this one was oblong, I believe. It is. It's the same number of hexagons, I believe, just square rather than rectangular. Yeah. But yeah, it's a very cool looking map. Let's go on with the next bit of the box. Okay. So, so now we're going to do part box and part extra Kickstarter bits. Now, if we pop plonk this pile on top of the box, all of this stuff is included in the Kickstarter version of the kit, of the box. Right. We got ours so early, they hadn't finished packing it. Right. Now, this is Terrain. Terrain now plays quite an important role in the layouts of the pictures. There are six pre-constructed layouts you can roll for in the rule book, 
and I expect people will do fan created ones as well later on. So you've got three slot golf slots on each side, but you'll be choosing different configurations depending on what sort of game you're having. So of those six slots, only b between one and two are active on each side of the board. Yeah. So it's very interesting. And to go with that, You've you have terrain. terrain. So you can block paths. Or on one of them, it may create a pincer point with exploding interactive terrain. Abs in. Yeah, there's two distinct types of terrain. You've got tall terrain, terrain. which is blocking. Yeah. And then you've got small terrain, which is mined. So any player that moves within one square of it... Will trigger every action. Absolutely. And, and that mine... from knockdown to four plus? Four yeah, you've got duds, like you've got knockdown, and then you've got four dice, five dice, and six dice explosions that just wipe players out. Yes. Very entertaining. And the fun thing is, is you can knock other people into them. Absolutely. If you knock an opponent into them, they they set the mine off. Ideally between two. Yes. Uh, so you can see, you get two big bags full of scenery, and that lets you make every single setup in the book and any extra you would like to. So if I quickly spin that over, if you look there, that's a four plus explosion. Yep. So there'll be... There's a five plus one there. Yeah. And there'll be a few other ones in there as well. So... That's quite a, quite a different one from the previous. Yeah, just having scenery on the board's enough, but then also give it an offensive capability. Well, it becomes quite strategic, then, especially if people are going to design their own scenarios. Yeah, because, hopefully we'll see a lot of those. Because it might be a case of have one thin line across the way, and then you have to run across and like risk stuff like that. So yeah. it's all quite odd, odd ways to do it. Now, so, here's based on that. you were looking at earlier on. Do you want me to open this one? No, no, no. Uh, actually, yes, sorry. Let that, can I have a look? Sorry. Yeah, that's, you've got two of these. So yeah, this is, ah, these are the MVPs. So all the freebooters, the players you can hire each game. And with the Kickstarter exclusive versions, you get two bags of them. Yeah. And they so also have the sponsors in there. So you've got that arachnid one you were quite fond yes, of. Yes, the nameless. And nameless. actually, so you can see Blaine sat inside there. So those are the bags of sponsors. Yeah. Then you get... Your hexagonal bases. Brilliant. And these are just plain clear ones to use with the MVPs and the sponsors. Yep. Then you have your roster. Yep. So that's for league play. And these ones now have up to 16 spaces for players. Very good. Yeah, which is very cool. Well, considering the the size, the, the, the amount of space this takes up as a game system, we, we were looking at it and it's like two per table in the store. So ideally, you could have up to six games playing, you know, oh, absolutely. Night if you were doing it instead of some of the other game systems. Yeah. Which space wise is excellent because you do all the dice on the table, you got your place where you put your cards. So you unlike some game systems where it ends up with quite a spread out around the, the actual Yeah, it stays area. quite compact. It all stays yeah. on that one rubber mat. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good so point. That's probably a good way of doing it. <coughs> This is the new rule book. It is. So. Now, this is great because, uh, first off, it's set out like the rest of the Magic rule book, so you can use it very easily. It's got a full list of contents. But what they've done, which I think is directly from listening to the fans, if you go straight to the very back of the um, actual thing, no, no, the back page. That is. Literally the back. Uh huh. They have given you a full cheat sheet with every different move action, every different action you can do. So that is all you use when you're playing it. Yeah. And then the inside, slightly more detailed with other cheat sheets. So, yeah, I think that's excellent. Well, as a... Oh, 60 pages, so there's still quite a lot going on. Oh, yeah, there's lots of fluff in there. Ah, uh, you found the different setups. There's the different setups, because there's your different trains and stuff like that. So you can see, actually, that the setups make for very, very different games. We were playing this setup, number five, earlier, and that is a long line and cluster of mines right across the centre of the board. Yeah. So the first actions of the turn were people running forward and setting mines off to clear a path for the better players. Yeah. But, you know, that's always an option with the, some of these things. But, you know, you've got all the additional information for your... Yeah, your free agents. Your free agents. That's so. the word, free agents. But, no. As a start... Very, Very cool. Right, okay. What else is in there? Well, you got the Kings of War War book. That's all the Kickstarter bits. Ah, those are Decals. transfers, yes. So that's for your so players. So, can I see the I... black ones? They're slightly easier to focus on than the white. Yeah. So you can see they've got different style numbering systems to number a whole team. I like, I like the sci-fi version. Yes. Right, now, here's something that you were very excited Ooh. about. 
Now they've this done is... these in all of their Kickstarter special releases. The signed special prints. And now I've managed to get these for Dead Zone, Dread Bull, and now this one. You I am very chuffed. Face. I do, but they look amazing. <laughs> so yeah, pretty, pretty pictures. Okay, so tokens. Tokens, tokens everywhere. These all start as standard cardboard ones. I assume at some point some there will be an upgrade do of plastic. Upgrade yes. plastics. But that, that's the nobbling token. Yes, nobbling. You do that to an opposing player and they get one dice removed from every roll. Thank you very much. Say so, as you smack them into the floor <laughs> and stamp on their face. So yeah, they're all double sided. They're decent quality. Activation. Yeah, a lot in there. Yeah. Ah, now you have coloured bases. Because in Dreadboard Extreme, rather than having... You start off with your whole team being of a single race. Yeah. But actually, the way you play a sponsor, when you play properly, I would say, you actually have people from all different sorts of races on one team. Yeah. So you have different colour bases, so it's clear which team is yours. I expect that at some point they will be selling a selection of these in different I would colors. assume so. It'd be silly not to. Because there'll be someone out there who goes, But I want green. I want red ones. <laughs> and you'll want purple ones. Oh, yes, you will. Right. Bag of dice. Yes, different colours this time. Well, you've got one of your dice will generally be the coach. Red are coaching dice. dice. Blue match the blue bases. Yellow match the yellow bases. Excellent. Yeah. Your stack of cards now. You've got sabotage cards, special movement cards. Yes. But no, that's it, because you've got the sabotage. Um, two? Yeah, just or those is it two. Three stacks. No, it's two stacks. You've got stacks. the sabotage, which each card has on it an offensive ability yeah. and a defensive ability. Yeah. Whereas the, So they count as two cards, really. And then the special move cards are the normal move cards that you would expect. And you can buy one of those with an action, I believe. Yeah, well, no, with this one, sort of. You buy it with instead of trading in your fan support for extra dice, you can trade them in for extra cards. Ah, yes, you do a fan check, yes. don't you? In Honor 4 Plus, you get an additional card. Absolutely. Cards. So they have right. changed it a little bit. And then, so we've got more tokens at the back, and these. Now, these bags are identical. There's two bags. Each one contains two teams. So it contains a full a human team and a full Catration uh, uh, team. And when you put the with two your, together... With your additional dread balls and stuff yeah, like that. They give you the new maxed out 16 player teams. Because you can have technically infinite people on your bench now. Absolutely. I, I, I think it might still be listed to 16, but I'm not sure how that works. Because it's, it's based on the fiscal side of how you operate as a coach now, not on the... Uh, yes. Abilities, you're, because you're, the yeah, when you level don't up, count no, like the coaches do. Absolutely, it's a sponsor that levels up each each game instead. Yeah, and that gives you access to better players, different players, and cheaper players. And that affects things like um, how they're seen by other people and things like that. And if absolutely. they know the right people, then the prices are lower and stuff like it's that. It's all about who you know, not what you know. And it will be synergies between certain factions and certain people. Absolutely. So, as you can see, this is a very different game to... I say very different. The core, the core rules are the same. But actually, the way you play the game is totally different because you can't predict the setup of the pitch. You can't predict how many players your opponent's going to start with. How the ball's going to bounce. How, yeah, the ball can come out of six different launch locations and go... Well, we play, I play four games now, and the ball goes anywhere on the pitch. It can launch up and end up almost anywhere on the pitch because of the way it just bounces off all of the objects, yeah. all the obstacles. It's insane. And when you think you've got a good thing going, a player knocks you back one and suddenly you hit two mines, explode, and your player's dead. Yes. When a player's injured, they don't go off the pitch, they fall down on the floor and start to bleed out. And then they can either, at the end of each turn, they either get one level better or one level worse. I had, I had two players that had been injured for three turns each, or, or for a value of three each. And I thought, okay, a couple of turns, they'll get up again, at least I haven't lost them. End of that turn, made the ball for each one, and they died. Yeah. They died. The player was really badly injured, so badly injured, they died. It's insane. I, I love it. It's so brutal. You, you would attack a normal player standing up. That's a dread ball thing. You run into them, you slam them, you knock them down. In Dreadball Extreme, they're already on the floor, dying. You run in, you slam them again, and you just push them over the edge. It's 
It's insane. Extreme is the best word for it. I love it. At some point, you'll be <laughs> seeing some pictures of games between him and Miguel because they're both our current. Oh, we're loving it. <laughs> but the problem is, we both want to play the convicts. Uh, explain why, though. The convicts have this amazing rule. The way. The convicts don't always want to play Dreadful, they force them to play Dreadful. So, to force them to play it, they give them electronic exploding collars which are designed as a way to persuade them to play and also deter them from escaping. But what that actually means is a unscrupulous sponsor can get annoyed with the player midway through the game and say, actually, they're being a bit rubbish. I'm going to push this big red button. Push the red button, the player explodes, dealing a horrendous amount of damage to every hex adjoining it. There, so, is, there, oh. there are some very good tactics where basically you run in into someone else's startup line where they're all generally clustered together and then you just you go oh pop. yeah pop them because you'll knock them all down for a start and then you get a good chance you're gonna kill a couple yeah good and chance you basically got you can run around while they're trying to get up and not bleeding out the other one that miguel me caught me on which was amazing um i got one of his key guards i got him down to the floor and i heard him so he's down for two uh, two damage already and I clustered all my people around him, ready to kick him in, determined to kill him. And I didn't quite kill him. I got him down to three, and I thought, oh, start of Miguel's turn. Pop. Yes. Boom. His player, which was already down for three turns, so it's pretty much useless now, he killed him, and he killed three of my people, if you need less than two strikers. That was it. He was just like, oh, by the way, that, that big uh, offensive line I've got, dead. He yes. decimated me. Yes. It, it was amazing. Well, as, as a tactical standpoint, that is extremely efficient. We want to try something new with Noxbox, <laughs> so we actually may film a couple of how-to games for this. I really love it. The actual games themselves, I've had a 10-minute game, where we won very quickly, and I've had a 40-minute game. Neither of which are that long for a game. No. And I think, if well, you guys would like it, I think it would be good to do a well how to play it. well within 30 to 60 minutes, it says on the side of the box, to be honest. So uh, well, absolutely, know. yeah. And that's a good guess, 30 to, 30 to 60 minutes. That yeah. works. I love it. I can't say enough good things about this. It's got all the all the tactics of Dreadball, but they've just made it a little bit more violent and a bit more raw and rugged. So when you've got exploding mines and people, exploding people humans. stamping on humans on the floor as they explode... And, and there's 12, so 12 teams to come out for this. I believe you have all of them coming at some point. Don't tell the wife. <laughs> we'll be doing a review of each one as yeah. they come in. So. And obviously it's all cross-compatible with Dreadball, because Magic are amazing like that. And I'm sure we've seen <coughs> different <coughs> MVPs get used in Dead Zone. I'm sure we'll see that carry on happening with the sponsors. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll see everyone from Dead Zone, everyone from Mars Attacks, will probably end up coming a Richard Extreme. Judge Dredd Martian standing as the Yes! Coach. Oh, that'll be amazing. Judge Dredd as a sponsor! We'll leave you with that thought. Until next time. Bye, guys. Remember to subscribe to the channel and like us on Facebook for all of your gaming needs.